विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर सामी पे रहो अमारिए नजर सामी पे रहो अमारिए घनश्याम महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे Supreme Almighty, our dear Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our beloved Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Nara. The most important element in religion is faithfulness faith faithfulness it's one thing everything else follows after this foundation you can say foundation in the form of making a big skyscraper or a very big building if one has a lack of faith or one's faith is weak then obviously even after building a great skyscraper it's bound to fall one day maybe by the hands of an earthquake or maybe by the hands of a tornado or just simple wind you never know but in the time of bhagwan swami narayan there were many many male and female devotees that possessed very very strong faith in bhagwan more so than males there were female devotees that possessed immense faith i can even give you the extent of today's story that this female devotee possessed so much faith that she had never even had the darshan or had met bhagwan swami narayan yet she was the follower of bhagwan swami narayan and followed each and every command without even breaking any rules niyams just to please bhagwan swami narayan without even meeting him just imagine someone calls you on the phone and tells you you don't know this person random you don't know who he is where he's from anything and he says that i'm the president of the united states and now i would like you to do this 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 so on and so forth something would you believe him you haven't met him you don't know who he is yet would you follow each and every command he says no obviously not because it's difficult to put faith in a person that you've never met difficult to nearly impossible but in the time of bhagwan swami narayan for the sake of devotees in current time examples were set by male and female devotees and today we would like to listen to a story analyze and learn that how faith is important and how faith should be meaning how firm should it be how strong it should be so let's listen to the story the title is shri hari at vajibai's residence <clears throat> Swami Narayan Hare 
Sri Hari returned to Gadara after traveling through Sorat. Sri Hari's travels had increased in distance and frequency to protect and support his devotees, many of, the, many of whom suffered physical torment from misinformed and ruthless rulers. Now, in that time, and we've heard before many times, Bhagwan Swaminarayan had many, many haters because at such a young age, when he took his, you can say, whole reign, the whole movement, the Swamran movement, at the age of 21, by the hands of Raman and Swami, and he started to rule the whole Sampraday, from the age of 21 to the age of 49, when he ascended back to his dham, his Akshar dham, for that time, Bhagwan did innumerable, countless miracles, you can say, countless different kinds of deeds, acts, changes, movements in society, changing all the bad, washing all the bad out, and bringing in all the good, making it green again. Due to that, due to that very sole purpose of changing the bad to the good. Not only that, but initiating over 2,000 saints, constructing six grand temples, writing his own code of commandments called the Shikshapatri, lecturing and discoursing for 10 years from the age of 39 to the age of 49, 10 years, in various villages such as Gadra, Sarangpur, Vartal, Amdavad, so on and so forth, consisting of 262 discourses, which we call the Vachnamrut, which completely opened the eyes of those who were present there at that time and for those in the future like ourselves right now, consisting of the deepest principles in all of the scriptures, all of the sastras, the Vedas, the Puranas, Upanishads, all these sastras, and putting it all into one book. Not only that, but performing non-violent yagnas. The yagna of Daban is very infamous, and everyone knows of this. Not only that, but changing the most cruel to become saint-like devotees, converting kings into saints, Ladudan Gadvi to Brahmanan Swami, Nityanan Swami, so many other saints like that, changing and revolutionizing wherever and wherever he went. Bhagwan Swami Narayan did all these acts in such a short time and due to that factor there was an uprising of many, many haters that were against this movement, the Swami Narayan movement. And let's face it right now. In this world, if a person sees that this person is on the rise, Everyone is appreciating him. Everyone is liking him. And why is this? Maybe we won't do anything externally or physically, but in our mind we'll definitely think. We'll definitely possess some kind of jealousy. We'll definitely possess some kind of animosity, some kind of hatred due to the factor that we cannot accept him or her, anyone. We can see that John F. Kennedy, the former president of the United States, was on such a rise, changing and revolutionizing. Abraham Lincoln was such a rise that both of these presidents got assassinated due to haters. Abraham Lincoln changed the face of the United States by ending the Civil War, making new changes for African-Americans making everything one. Yet, 
what gift did he get for that? He became assassinated. Same thing with John F. Kennedy. These are former iconic characters who paid great tribute, yet they were not gifted in that manner because they, the, those who hated them could not handle their greatness. In the same way, in that time, Bhagwan Swaminarayan was on such a rise that there were so many haters that Bhagwan, what he was doing is, in this small paragraph, he, it's saying that Bhagwan was traveling distances far left and right, keeping devotees safe, giving them true knowledge, giving them true wisdom, and also getting punished. His devotees, his saints, get punished for it, but yet he still tried to keep everything contained. That was the situation at that time. Laldas, the ruler of Vishnagar, repeatedly misdirected his animosity for Sri Hari on his devotees. There was a ruler by the name of Laldas, who was the uh, who was a ruler of Vishnagar, and he hated Bhagwan Swaminarayan, and he, you know, his devotees, he punished them as well. He often beat them, locked locked innocent villagers in confinement and forced them to stand outside un, unshielded from the summer sun for lengthy amounts of time. Sri Hari resolved to put an end to such unjustified practices forever. So Bhagwan could not stand his devotees or innocent people being tortured without any kind of reason. So he wanted to put an end to this. One night, while at while all of Gadara was asleep, Sri Hari snuck away from Akshar Ordi and started walking to Vishnagar. So the story actually now starts here. But the first two paragraphs that were read were just kind of to uh, find a, a background and build a background. But the story of faith starts right now. But in that scenario, Bhagwan is going to the village of Vishnagar. He's walking there trying to stop the, the ruler, Laldas, from doing all these things. But what kind of devotee does Bhagwan Swaminarayan encounter at that time? How does this devotee possess faith? What kind of faith? How strong? That's what we want to analyze today. So Sri Hari snuck away from Akshara Ordi and started walking to Vishnagar. Though Sri Hari wanted to be alone, Mulji Brahmachari followed Sri Hari for a few kilometers. Sri Hari noticed that he was being forced and ordered Brahmachari to go back to Gadara. I command you. So Bhagwan Swaminarayan at that time had a very, very dedicated, you can say, we cannot say, but just to put it into perspective for all of you, a servant that did everything and anything Bhagwan Swaminarayan asked. He was such an idol that any kind of, you can say, mir uh, you can say incident that, that could, a Bhagwan could not do, meaning something that w if we see Bhagwan, you know, uh, doing a Leela Charitra, which is not Bhagwan-like, then we would be like, this is not Bhagwan. How could he do this? No. But Mulji Brahmachari was such a sevak, such a servant, that he saw everything in Bhagwan Swamiran to be divine. Never did he doubt even for a second or had even one thought of Bhagwan Swaminarayan to be a human. He always, always had faith that this was God himself. So when Bhagwan woke up and started to sneak out of the village to go to Vishnagar, he was walking. Mulji Brahmachari followed. He saw that Bhagwan had woken up, so he followed for a few kilometers back in his shadow. Bhagwan Swamira noticed, obviously, that Brahmachari was following him. So he caught him and he told him, go back to Gadara. There's This is none of your business. I'll be back by the morning. Brahmachari replied confidently, Prabhu, I am your shadow. I follow you wherever you choose to go. May I ask you where you're going? So Brahmachari is inquiring, where are you going, Bhagwan, at the middle of the night? 
What happened? Is there a problem? Sri Hari turned around and started pelleting Brahmachari with stones and pebbles. Oh, Bhagwan. He, Bhagwan knew that Brahmachari would not even leave him with words. Even if Bhagwan says, go away, go away, this will do nothing. So Bhagwan started to do a physical, uh, you can say, tactic by throwing stones and pebbles at Brahmachari. Brahmachari walked into the line of fire with his head covered. He shouted, Prabhu, if you hit me, you are going to have to care for me. If you let me follow you, I will care for you. It's your choice. Look at how you can say, uh, look at how much Brahmachari wants to please Bhagwan, wants to serve Bhagwan. That even if Bhagwan is throwing stones and rocks at him, he's going in the line of fire and saying that Maharaj, I want to care of you, so it's your choice. Please make a choice. Sri Hari stopped and said, Then follow me to Vishnagar. I want, I want to meet Laldas, the Shuba. Brahmachari froze and pleaded with Sri Hari, Prabhu, Laldas is a wretched fool. He will try to have you killed. Let's turn back. So everyone in that time knew that Laldas, that ru the ruler of Vishnagar, was a very, very wicked ruler and he was such a person that tormented many many incident people and without a doubt if Bhagwan and Brahmachari went there then Laldas would tell his uh, servants to take uh, Bhagwan into custody and torment and torture him so Brahmachari thinking ahead said Bhagwan we don't want to go there this is going to be a problem Sri Hari smiled and asked Brahmachari who makes the leaves ruffle so Bhagwan is asking, who makes the leaves ruffle? Meaning, who makes the leaves move, you can say? The wind, responded Brahmachari. And who causes the wind to blow? Bhagwan causes the wind to blow. And who am I? You are Bhagwan. Mulsi Brahmachari knew that it, this was Bhagwan himself, so it was easy for him. He said, you are Bhagwan. Then Bhagwan said, you, then you must stop worrying and follow me to Vishnagar. But hurry up, I have to stop at a devotee's home on the way. Sri Hari decided to rest at, the, at night in Bijapur at the home of Vajibai. After asking around, Sri Hari made his way to Vajibai's home. The only person in town who allowed sadhus to rest at her residence. So Vajibai was such that she only allowed sadhus to rest. Meaning, she at that time would be there and a devotee would be there and would accept and would let sadhus sleep there. And then she would clean up after, after the sadhus left. Vajibai was a bhakta whose faith was driven by conviction. She had, she had yet to have the Sri Hari's darshan, but her pativrata bhakti suppressed even Sri Hari's expectations. Pativrata bhakti, meaning faithful devotion towards Bhagwan Swaminarayan, was immense. She had not met Bhagwan Swaminarayan yet. In this charitra, it said that her bhakti, her affection, suppressed even Sri Hari's expectations. Now, just imagine. In that time, what kind of prabhau, meaning what kind of effect, what kind of, uh, you can say, vibrations Bhagwan Swaminarayan had, where even he was on the earth at that time, and there was many, many devotees that had not met him ever, yet without meeting him, they had already become devotees. By listening to Bhagwan Swami Dainan's incidences, what he had performed, and at that time it was more difficult because there was one side that was the whole movement, and then on the other side there was the negative trying to destroy the whole Swami Dainan movement. Who to listen to, who to look after, who to follow, that was the difficult situation. In this time right now, we 
obviously there is no other kind of distractions. So by associating with sadhus and reading scriptures like the Vachnamrut, Satsangi Jivan, Swami Nivato, we can easily worship Bhagwan. But in that time, it was new. It was still building. It was still in construction. It was revolutionizing slowly but surely. But the negative force was still there trying to take down the movement because of haters of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. But Vajibai did not look at any side. Vajibai knew that I want to please Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So I want to worship him with my Pativrata Bhakti, meaning my faithful de devotion. Sri Hari called out to Vajibai from the outer gate of her courtyard. Now remember, Vajibai has never met Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Let's see what Bhagwan says. Mother, we need a place to spend the night. Vajibai immediately responded, Go away. I'm not allowing smokers into my home. This is what Vajibai said. Because there's many, many uh, trying to take, you know, a, uh, a place to sleep at that time. And strangers, obviously, Vajibai did not allow. He only allowed sadhus. And Bhagwan was not dressed like a sadhu. Obviously, so then Vajibai expected that this is a, a smoker, this is a, a person who is a, a criminal, who is a, pretty much a robber, things like that. So due to these suspicions, Vajibai said, I don't want to see you anymore, go away. My heart and home belong to Bhagwan Swaminare. This is what she responded. Sri Hari was pleased, but decided to push her a bit further, meaning Bhagwan knew that this was how she was going to respond, and it was fantastic that he even said he knew that this was going to happen. Yet, for the sake of us, Bhagwan remembered all of us in that time and said, I want to show my devotees in the future how faith should be. Due to that, Bhagwan pushed the button a little more. Mother, I will sleep out here in the courtyard on the floor. I will not be a nuisance. Vajibai eventually agreed. Sure, no drinking or smoking. If you do either of the two, I will throw you out in the middle of the night. Meaning, Vajibai had, had compassion that this person is sleeping on the floor. It's very cold outside. You know... Let me let him in, but let me give a couple of rules here. No smoking, no drinking, nothing like that. And you can come and sleep for this night and then leave. If you, if you do either of the two, I will throw you out in the middle of the night. Brahmachari spread a, a sheet on the floor and requested Sri Hari to sit on it. After a few minutes, Sri Hari called out to Vajibai again. Mother, the floor is hard. May I have a cot? Meaning Bhagwan Swaminarayan, he wanted to see how much he can push. So at first when Bhagwan came in with Mulji Brahmachari, Mulji Brahmachari took a sheet, a bed sheet, and <clears throat> put it on the floor and he, Bhagwan slept there. But then Bhagwan, obviously trying to push a couple buttons here and there, said, I'm very cold, I need a cot. Meaning I need a, a bed, kind of like a, a wooden bed to sleep on. So, do you have one available? Vajibai was annoyed by their request. I do not have a spare cot. Sorry. Sri Hari instructed, Mother, do not lie. There is a new cot in the second room. Please give me it. Please give it to me for the sake of your Swaminare. Now, Bhagwan is using his powers to kind of waver Vajibai. Because Vajibai obviously knew that these are strangers. They have never been to my home before. This is the first time. But Bhagwan, being Bhagwan, what he did was he said, I know you have a cot. You're lying. So there's one in that second room. So why don't you give it to me in the name of Swaminarayan? Vajibai was flabbergasted. Meaning she was just surprised, amazed. How did this person know about the cot she dismissed it it she dismissed it as a coincidence and gave him the cot and went back to sleep went back to sleep 
A few minutes later, Sri Hari called out again. Mother, may I have a blanket? It's getting a little cold out here. Now, again, Bhagwan is pushing a little further. Vajibai lied again, curious to see what response her lie would solicit. Babaji, go to sleep. I do not have a spare blanket. Sri Hari responded, Mother, you are lying again. The spare blanket is in the third room. There is a pile of them. I just want one. Please give it to me for the sake of your Swami Narayan. Again, Bhagwan, using his omniscient powers, trying to waver Vajibai's faith, not even seeing Bhagwan once, but letting a stranger in. And this stranger, using such kind of powers, you know, thinking and knowing where the hole, you can see where the cot is, where the blankets are. Maybe at that time, Vajibai would waver in her faith and maybe think that this is Bhagwan himself or this is another god, so I should believe in him. Bhagwan wanted to see and test her faith. Sri Hari responded, Mother, you are lying again. The spare blanket is in the third room. There's a pile of them. Vajibai could not sleep for the rest of the night. She wondered how this person knew about the presence of the cot and the blanket and why he referred Swaminarayan. Meaning, Bhagwan obviously knew that she was a, a very, very firm follower of him. But Bhagwan used two tactics. Number one, he used his omniscient powers. And number two, he mentioned Swaminarayan twice, thinking that maybe there would be a little bit of waver. Although she was curious, her faith in Sri Hari was resolute. The person could show her a hundred miracles, but her faith was firmly fixed in Sri Hari. This is a true, you can say, sign of a, a person who has firm faith in Bhagwan. Arpuji Guruji, many incidences where there have been others who he has met and shown miracles, what not, but he has never wavered his faith in any other deity or any other avatar, but only has kept firm faith in Hare Krishna Maharaj, Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And due to that, we can see that, we can say that he is in this position where he is, and it's all due to faith. Faith is the key to attain Bhagwan. If one wants to meet Bhagwan, if one wants to greet Bhagwan, if one wants to become one with Bhagwan, then the ultimate, you can say, not tool, but the ultimate, you can say, element is to obtain firm faith, install firm faith in oneself. And that can only be done by the association of an Ekantik Satpurush. If he gives you and guides you and gives you the right elements and you accept, accept them and start to really, really think in your heart about all these things, then your life changes in that fashion. But it can only happen by the association of such an Ekandik Satpurush who has such kind of faith in Bhagwan. An hour before dawn, Vajibai stood up to peer outside the window of her room. She noticed that Sri Hari's feet extended out of the cot and touched the people tree near the wall, which was several feet away from the cot. Now, this was the third and final, you can say, blow. Bhagwan showed his miracle through extending his feet, his feet from the cot, meaning from the bed, to the tree that was a couple of feet away. I mean, who can do this at that time? No one, or any time. And this was when Vajibai knew that this is not an ordinary person that I have let enter into my home with Mulji Brahmachari. She was speechless, but she prayed to Sri Hari for the strength to keep her Pativarta Bhakti firm. Yet, 
even after seeing such kind of miracle, she still prayed to keep her faithful bhakti, her affection towards Bhagwan Swaminarayan, firm. So even if by seeing these things, she would not waver in faith. Sri Hari left for Vishnagar in the morning, but he was deeply moved by Vajibai's faith. No amount of miracles could shake her conviction in, in him. Later on, Vajibai found out that Sri Hari was none other than Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself. Such a charitra in that time, giving us power, giving us a, a, a perspective that how should our faith in Bhagwan be? Life is full of obstacles. There's many, many philosophers and many, many people who have written quotes on how life has ups and downs. But moreover, how to control and how to view and how to take about and go and approach those ups and downs is a very, very important factor. And the, the thing that keeps us steady, the, king, the thing that keeps us, the element that keeps us leveled is faith. Then no matter how many ups and downs a person has, if one has faith in Bhagwan, then one will always stay equal in all situations. Thinking of our Puja Guruji, even at this moment, at this age, from the beginning of his life till right now, Puja Guruji has seen more downs than ups. Many, many obstacles have came his way. Many, many people. And the reason I'm saying this is that not because Puja Guruji was doing something bad, but Puja Guruji was rising, is rising in society. And due to that, in the eyes of those haters, due to that, there has been many, many adverse circumstances that have been thrown in his way. Yet, his faith in Hare Krishna Maharaj, his day-to-day -day life, his routine, his perspective, his principles have stayed firm and strong as a mountain. And that's all due to faith in Bhagwan Swaminarayan. We can learn from Vajibai's story, Arpuja Guruji's example, that life is full of ups and downs. Yet, if we keep firm faith in Bhagwan, then there will be no problem and we would reach Akshardham before we even know it. So even as teenagers and whoever is watching, if you are in school right now or if you are in college or if you are even have a job, sure, you're approaching many, many things, but not to worry because if you know that Bhagwan is on our side, Bhagwan is with us, our Puja Guruji is with us, then who or what in this world can stop us from reaching our goal? Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.